All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most important theories in all of finance, modern portfolio theory. Okay, so I'll start off in this video talking about the modern portfolio theory and the fact that, you know, or the basics of it. And then we'll talk about the benefits of diversification, why we diversify portfolios, and then we'll kind of walk through the, you know, how we build the efficient frontier, uh, the entirety of our first step of modern portfolio theory, and then we'll wrap up. So let's get started. Now, the modern portfolio theory is, I mean, we often think of it as the start of modern finance. It's one of our earliest academic papers uh, from 1952. You know, people published academic literature on financial topics before this, but this is seen as kind of where our discipline kind of starts and starts to separate itself from economics. Uh, now, this theory that we're about to see is it's a Nobel Prize winning theory. Uh, and what it does is it builds this framework for assembling an efficient portfolio. Basically, what it says is that if you have these three components, expected returns, standard deviations of your assets, and correlations between those assets, you can identify an efficient portfolio. In other words, you can identify the portfolio that has the maximum sharp ratio. And basically our entire goal with this first step of MPT or modern portfolio theory is to maximize our sharp ratio. Now, essentially ret portfolio return minus risk-free rate divided by standard deviation of the portfolio. Uh, so uh, one thing you're going to see throughout this video uh, is that we maximize our diversification benefits by finding assets that have really low correlations or even negative correlations with one another. So this is, I mean, this is the big benefit of diversification. We can find a higher sharp ratio by finding assets that have very, very low correlation with one another. Okay, now modern portfolio theory has two steps. We are only going to focus on the first step in this video. The first step is called the security selection step. Sometimes you'll hear this called mean variance optimization. Uh, in the real world, this is the most important step in modern portfolio theory. Uh, if people start talking about modern portfolio theory, this is the step that you need to be able to talk about. It is, I mean, this is what software will do for a financial advisor, when you plug in some expected returns, et cetera, it'll spit out the ideal weights of securities in a portfolio. So, you know, it's important to have a good understanding of this step. The second step is called asset allocation. And this step, uh, basically, whereas we identify how much we're going to invest in risky portfol portfolio assets in the first step, in the second step, we determine how much we invest between our risky portfolio itself and some risk-free asset, like a T-bill. So uh, I, essentially, the security selection step is picking individual securities, whereas the asset allocation step is identifying how much we hold in, say, uh, a really low-risk asset, like a T-bill or a CD or something like that, and our actual stock portfolio as an investor. Now, uh, one other thing I should note before we get going, the security selection step is way more prominent in the real world for several reasons, but the biggest reason is that uh, to complete the second step here, the asset allocation step, you need to know uh, what your level of risk aversion is, and that's very hard to estimate. So you'll see this time and again in these lecture videos, but uh, suffice it to say, uh, security selection is way, way more commonly used in the real world. All right, so uh, consider two assets. We have Apple and we have Walmart. And Apple, we have an expected return of 12%. Walmart, we have an expected return of 7%. And we have some standard deviations between these two. And we can also invest in a one-year T-bill. Uh, the T-bill has a 5% return, but it has no risk. I mean, when we talk about risk-free assets, uh, U.S. Treasury securities are very often seen as the risk-free assets in the United States. They're kind of our, our safety asset. So anytime you hear the term risk-free, basically think of a T-bill or a T-note or a T-bond. Uh, now, we should be able to collect some additional information if we're trying to you know, build a portfolio containing these three assets. We'd want to know, say, the correlation coefficient between Apple and Walmart, 
Uh, we'd want to have some initial weights, say 50% and 50%, and we could calculate our portfolio standard deviation. Uh, but ultimately, what we're going to have if we have all this information is a Sharpe ratio. So our return on our portfolio would be 9.5% uh, minus our risk-free rate, and then divided by our portfolio standard deviation, we'd get a Sharpe ratio. But the big question here is, is this the best weighting for these two stocks in this portfolio? In other words, uh, would it be better to have 75% of our portfolio in Apple stock and 25% in Walmart? Or is there some other weighting that would increase this Sharpe ratio? Well, this is what the security selection step of modern portfolio theory does. It uses these inputs that you're seeing and it identifies the maximum Sharpe ratio and tells us what the ideal weights are for the securities in this portfolio. Now, we do have a couple of key pieces of information you need to know or you need to keep in mind when we determine which portfolio is better than another. Uh, generally, we say a higher return is better. No surprise there. So if portfolio A has a higher return than portfolio B, uh, you know, we say portfolio A dominates portfolio B. Now, we also like low risk portfolios. So if portfolio A has a lower standard deviation than portfolio B, that would be ideal too. Now, the key here is that if portfolio A has both a higher return and a lower risk, this is really what we're after. Uh, essentially, we are looking for the portfolios that are you know, have high returns and low standard deviations. So let me give you an example of how we identify the ideal weights in a portfolio. So in this example, uh, I decided to just keep going with this Apple and Walmart uh, it, you know, example. Uh, so what I did was I took the expectations from uh, two slides ago and I plotted the portfolio return and the portfolio volatility for our two stocks, given their expected returns, their standard deviations. And each of these dots that you're seeing on this line represents essentially a 10% a jump. So at this point where my cursor is, uh, that represents the point where we invest everything in Apple and nothing in Walmart. Down here, we invest nothing in Apple and everything in Walmart. And then every other dot here is a different portfolio combination. Uh, you know, so where is the ideal point that we should invest? I mean, some people might say we want the portfolio with the highest return. Other people might say we want the lowest risk. What is the best portfolio? Well, quite frankly, the best portfolio is the one that has the highest Sharpe ratio, which as you'll see is going to be somewhere on the top part of this line. Now, uh, I I mentioned that we want to diversify our portfolio across assets that have low correlations with one another. So you might be wondering, how did I get that, that last graphic, you know, that this thing right here? Well, the answer is, uh, the reason we have a curve instead of just like a straight line that represents a combination of these two assets is because uh, there are some, you know, if we have non perfect correlation between two assets, there's always going to be some diversification benefit because whenever stock or Apple stock has a high return, Walmart stock have a might have a low return and vice versa. And so during periods where one stock is having poor performance, the other might have higher performance. And so they kind of moderate uh, portfolio volatility. So what I'm trying to get at here is the lower the correlation between our assets, the smaller the portfolio volatility we can have. So here in our blue line, this is our original, uh, you know, weighting. So we had a, originally, if you had invested everything in Walmart and nothing in Apple, you'd be right here. And here's our point where we invest everything in Apple, nothing in Walmart. And we got every point on this line. Now, uh, this, this purple line, this occurs when we have perfect positive correlation between Apple and Walmart. And as you can see, uh, you know, essentially every portfolio combination is just a, it's 
I mean, these are, it's a linear combination. I mean, there is no diversification benefit. You can only increase your return or the only way to, uh, in, uh, you know, reduce your standard deviation is to decrease your expected return. But this green line, this represents the case where we have almost perfectly negative correlation. And you can see some significant benefits here. Say this point right here, this is where we have, yes, it's a 9% return, but very, very low portfolio volatility. And this is good for an investor that doesn't like risk. So, you know, what we're after here is portfolios that can get very, very far over here and as high as we can up here. Basically, we're looking for a portfolio that can get way up here in this top left area. Okay, now a couple additional points on diversification. Uh, basically, portfolios, I, I know I touched on this already, but anytime we have uh, assets that have non-perfect correlation, we are always going to have some benefit from that diversification, from adding those that stock to the portfolio. Uh, and one other point you're going to see here in a few seconds, uh, the benefit of adding additional securities is going to diminish over time. So a big takeaway here, we do get some benefit from adding securities to our portfolio, but that benefit diminishes as you have a larger and larger number of securities in your portfolio. All right. Now let's break down this line uh, in a little more detail. Now this line, uh, this is what we call our minimum variance frontier. It represents the minimum variance that you can achieve for every expected portfolio return value. So this, you know, 6% return, the lowest variance that you could have would be uh, comprised of a portfolio that had, oh, let's say, uh, negative 20% in Apple and 120% in Walmart. Uh, the way you get that is by shorting Apple and buying Walmart. So if you shorted Apple, you'd have negative position in Apple. Uh, now, uh, it is possible to get combinations, portfolio weights way out here on the right-hand side, but this blue line represents the, the furthest to the left that you can get. Uh, and we do have a couple of terms that you should know here. Uh, so this entire curve that you're looking at, the blue curve, that is called our mean variance frontier. I already used it. Uh, the minimum variance portfolio, that's the portfolio that it, that has the lowest volatility. That's the point right here uh, at the very tip. And then finally, the, the portfolio combination with the ideal weights that we're looking for, uh, that is what we call our optimal risky portfolio. That's the portfolio with the highest sharp ratio. And when we perform security selection, we are, we're essentially identifying that portfolio combination. Sometimes we'll call this the tangency portfolio, and I'll show you why that is in a second. But, uh, in other words, uh, basically one of these portfolios on this blue line is going to be the ideal portfolio. It's our job in security selection to identify which one that is because it's going to have the highest sharp ratio. Now, uh, I do have one other term that you need to know. This is absolutely a must in terms of term, uh, you know, uh, you know, things that you should keep with you after you leave this class, uh, the efficient frontier. Now the efficient frontier is the set of potentially optimal portfolios, uh, on the minimum variance frontier. Basically, it's a part of the minimum variance frontier that's north of the, the minimum variance portfolio. Uh, this frontier represents the highest expected return you could get for a standard deviation above the minimum variance portfolio. Now, to illustrate this, I do have another graphic. I think this is the best way to illustrate this. Basically, our efficient frontier is everything on this minimum variance frontier, this blue line, uh, starting from our minimum variance portfolio. So it's basically from where my cursor is and up. Now we can also, if we have more than two securities in our portfolio, uh, we can build portfolio combinations that are not efficient. And those inefficient portfolios would get us to places like, oh, this point right here, uh, where we have a portfolio volatility of like 0.58 
and a portfolio return of, I don't know, we'll say 11%. Now, the reason we say that these in, these combinations are inefficient is because, well, we can build a portfolio that's on the efficient frontier that has the same return, but a lower volatility, a lower amount of risk. And so what we would say here is that the point here dominates the point here because it's got you know the same return, but lower volatility. All right. Now I do have a few more definitions for you. Unfortunately, you know, when we talk about theories, there's always a lot of definitions. Uh, we are coming to the end of the definitions though. So, you know, good news for you. Uh, now we have a couple of different lines that we talk about with modern portfolio theory. Now, generally modern portfolio theory assumes that you can invest in a risk-free asset. So that's just a, a security that has a, a positive return and a standard deviation of zero. Why zero? Because it's your risk-free asset. And we can draw all kinds of lines starting with that risk-free asset and rating, radiating out. Now, most of these lines are going to be called capital allocation lines, and they represent some combination of a risk-free portfolio and some risky portfolio that you as an investor can hold. The line that we're most interested in is a capital, a capital allocation line called the capital market line. And this line is a graphical representation of the line that runs starting from our risk-free asset to our tangency portfolio, our portfolio combination with the highest sharp ratio. And you know, that tangency portfolio is going to be our optimal risky portfolio. It's going to be on the efficient frontier. It's going to have the highest risk adjusted return. And uh, it is going to have the ideal weights that we want to invest in. All right. So I, I realize I just threw a bunch of stuff out you, out there at you. So let me just show you this graphically. So uh, again, I just built on our example. So here's our minimum variance line that we've had since the beginning of this example. Our minimum variance point would be right here where my cursor is. This point right here would be our risk-free asset. So uh, let's say it has you know a five percent return. It's zero risk, so our volatility is zero. And this line, this green line, this is our capital market line. It it's a line running from our risk-free asset tangent to our minimum variance frontier, and the point where it just barely touches our op our frontier, that's our optimal risky portfolio combination. That's our tangency portfolio. Basically, this point right here, this is the ideal place we want to be. It represents the portfolio with the ideal weights. And that's what we're trying to calculate in security selection. So uh, in another video, I am going to do this. I am going to show you this. Uh, I just wanted to get all the theory or the finer points of the theory out there. But basically what we're trying to do in this security selection step is identify the risky portfolio combination that has the highest sharp ratio. And that portfolio combination is going to be somewhere on the efficient frontier. So minimum variance frontier north of the minimum variance portfolio. So somewhere on this top part, and it's going to be the portfolio combination that uh, is tangent or, you know, where the CML is tangent to the minimum variance frontier. So right here. Okay. So let's summarize. Uh, we talked about investors demanding e efficient portfolios, and we often measure this using the sharp ratio. Uh, our ideal portfolio is the one that has the highest sharp ratio. And, you know, I did introduce modern portfolio theory and in modern portfolio theory, that ideal portfolio is the one where the capital market line is tangent to the efficient frontier. Uh, so we are going to do a lot of uh, analysis with this in class. So you know, expect to be working a lot with Excel in the next several weeks. I, I realize we are going we're going down the rabbit hole as deep as we will go in this class with this section. So uh, with that, I'm going to leave. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.